All right, welcome back. Again, my name is Dave Knight, I'm the Kilted Chef. Uh, today for you, we have a fun, real quick summer dish. Uh, this is a roasted aubergine. And as you can see, I've got these beautiful little eggplants, okay? Uh, zebra striped eggplants right now. Again, spring's coming, farmer markets are opening up, greenhouses are producing. Uh, so I'm really, you'll see me use a lot of these heirloom baby tomatoes. Uh, they're just out everywhere right now. So the first thing we want to do is take our eggplant, trim the stem off. Make some room on the cutting board. All right, and we're going to split these in half. Now what we want to do with eggplant, and being in New York, there's a lot of Italians, so you guys should know this, is we're going to salt them. We're just going to sprinkle salt over top, and what this is going to do is going to take that bitterness out. And heavily salt. We're going to put these aside with the salt on the cut surface. And let those sit. Because these are so small, I only need to let them sit about 10 minutes. Uh, Full-size eggplant, probably, now 30. Shouldn't need to go any more than that. We're going to so we're going to roast these in the pan, sear them in the pan, get some color on them. And I'm going to do that in butter, let them sit. I'm going to rinse them off. Okay, I'm not going to do it with the salt. I'm going to serve it with a honey ricotta. So I have my ricotta cheese. And again, owning a company called The Kilted Chef, where we support local beekeepers. I'm all about using honey from local source bees. Stir that in. Again, use the back of the spoon to get any lumps out. Just a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. All right, that'll be our dressing on the plate. Make sure that's nice and warm. Get a pat of butter in there. Again, I like cooking with butter. Lay down a paper towel. I'm gonna pat them dry. That way we're not putting water in fat. All right, I've got my heat on a medium setting. Swirl it around, don't let the butter brown. Once the butter's melted, cut side down. Roll around, make sure they're not sticking. And we're gonna let this go for a couple minutes, cut side down, and then we're gonna flip it over. Once I flip them, probably three minutes in the oven. I don't wanna take them until they're completely soft. I want them to have a little bit of firmness in the bite to them, or al dente. And just remember, whenever cooking, just be careful with burns, okay? Hot butter, hot grease, that kind of thing. Just be careful. We always want to bring safety first to our kitchen. Now I do have my oven set at 350 degrees. Now if these were a larger eggplant, a regular full-size eggplant, I'd set my oven at probably around 425 degrees. Again, because these are so small, I want to be a little more gentle with them. Got a little bit of color on them, so let's flip them over. All right, so we're gonna put these in the oven for about three minutes, 350 degrees. We want them to have a nice firm bite to them. While that's finishing up, let's set up our plate, okay? All right, so I've got my honey ricotta. I'm gonna do a little dollop and just a swoosh on the plate. Fresh tomatoes. A little bit of sprinkle of salt, very light. You don't want it too salty. I'm gonna leave the pepper off the tomatoes. Eggplants have been in here for three minutes. Let's pull these out and see what they look like. And we got a nice little bit of color on them. Perfect. They're nice and tender. Still got a nice firm bite to them. We 
You want to stagger them on the plate. I've got some roasted shallots that I've already roasted off. And get them in the butter, move them around, get them coated, get some more of that flavor onto them. Take some of our baby greens. Just randomly tuck them in. Now remember, we salted these eggplant, so we don't need to add any more salt. Plus, we've got salt on the tomatoes. And again, stagger your greens. A little olive oil drizzle. And then finish it with a little bit of good quality balsamic. And there you have it. Roast baby aubergine salad. Taking what I have learned over the past 30 years, I have perfected this 200 year old traditional honeycomb candy recipe which led to blending of sweet, savory, and spicy flavors with raw honey. The generations of our past use this process to preserve the honey throughout the winter months, much as they process and stored fruits, vegetables, and other fresh foods. The result is a light, crispy, and flavorful candy. Our Kilted Chef LLC storefront currently offers 20 flavors of the honeycomb candy. The original is on display today. We recently launched our honeycomb candy sweetened tea line featuring locally sourced and specially blended loose leaf tea from the Tea Spot in Colorado. We currently offer four flavors to choose from. Each box contains six pre-measured single-use tea bags combined with our honeycomb candy dust for an instant sweetener. I have the Earl Grey and Yerba Mate blends on display today. So visit KiltedChefLLC.com and place your order today. We currently offer shipping in the U.S. For military personnel, we really appreciate your service and offer free worldwide shipping for all active duty and veteran military members. All right, welcome back. Our next recipe is gonna be a pineapple upside down cake, a play on that. Um, I'm actually gonna tie it up and form it into corn husks like a tamale. Uh, I'm gonna leave the top open. So first thing we're gonna do is take our pineapple, I've trimmed the top off, trim the bottom, go down the sides. Now I only need a little bit of this, so let's take that much off of it. All right, a little butter in our saute pan. our pineapple pieces in with the butter. I'm also going to finish that with a little bit of agave syrup right at the end. All right, let that sit there for a second. Now, while this is going, and I'm going to keep an eye on it, I've got it on a low medium heat to make our cake. So the first thing you want to do is take some melted butter, sugar, blend that together. All right, once you've got that good incorporated, go in with your flour. And with this, we're gonna make a paste. This way I ensure that all the lumps of flour are broken up. Here we keep an eye on our pineapple. All right, you got a little bit of saute on there. Let's finish that with agave syrup. All right, so all my lumps of flour are busted up. Baking soda, baking powder, we have nutmeg, and some cinnamon. Incorporate that in, add in a couple eggs. I 
I am keeping an eye on my pineapple. I'm going to reduce this down a little bit, get rid of some of the moisture and the liquid. Again, using my spatula to work the ingredients against the bowl, get those lumps out of there. All right, last thing is our milk. Make sure we scrape the bowl really well, as well as get any residual batter off our spatula. Make sure it's all incorporated. All right, and what you end up with is a nice creamy batter. Now, I want to spoon the pineapple and leave a lot of the liquid. I don't want to add a lot of liquid to the batter or else it's going to get too loose. And just gently fold that in. And that's what your finished batter should look like, okay? Still a little bit thick, thick enough where it's going to hold inside the tamale husk. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so I've taken the batter, moved it into a smaller bowl so it's easier to work with. These are corn husks for tamales, and these I need to soak, okay, for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, that way they become more pliable. And so what we're gonna do, very carefully, and I'm using a bowl here so it keeps its shape, and I'm actually gonna bake it in the bowl. That way it holds its shape. If I were to lay this flat onto a sheet pan, it would just open up. So two of them opposing, leaving the ends out, and this is where I'm gonna tie it and kind of pull it together. A little bit of batter in there, kind of even it out in the bowl. Take your string. Tie one there, and one on the other side. And again, just make sure it's evened out in the bowl. Then we're gonna bake it just like that. So this is going into a 325 degree oven, and it's gonna take about 20 minutes. All right, let's check on our pineapple tamale. It's been in there for about 20 minutes. That's our finished product as it is baked. Just very, very carefully onto the plate. And there you go. All right, thank you again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the recipes. We made a baby aubergine salad with roasted shallots, baby heirloom tomatoes, and a honey ricotta. And to finish it off, we did a roast, basically a pineapple upside down cake as a tamale. And we hope you enjoyed that. If you like what you saw, come visit us at KiltedChef.com. Again, my name is Dave Knight. I'm the Kilted Chef. And we'll see you next time.